we see a carriage traveling. Hey, Levia, aren't you a bit too relaxed? Huh? You think so? All right, ready to go? Oh, very well. I'll tag along with you, no matter how far. You said that with such a cool look just yesterday. What's the problem? It's not like there's anything to do until we get to the Beast Moon continent. Yeah, true, but still. Besides, I'm on boat duty after we get to the port. Seems like a small price to pay to employ a god of the seas for free. Well, I mean, the war stopped all ships, so there's no other way. Can't you do some magic that lets us jump all the way there in one go? Transfer magic? Yeah, do that. You're a sea god, right? What do you think a god of the seas is? Transfer magic is a huge hassle. Years of preparation. Extreme magic power? It's not something you can just throw around. I guess nobody would use horse-drawn carriages or ships if it were that easy. Travel takes effort, so... It only makes sense to receive proper compensation for that, don't you think? Uh, fine. What was that? We stopped. Thank you. Sorry, we'd like to share this ride with you until we get to town. She recognizes Setsu. Big sis? What, you know her? Long time no see, crybaby Elise. Master Setsu? That was a long time ago. I'm not a crybaby anymore. I'm not going to cry. This is Elise Ifriel. We traveled together for a while the last time I was summoned. I am Master Setsu's top pupil. I don't remember ever taking you on as a pupil. What are you talking about? You taught me the fundamentals of combat every night, physically and painstakingly. Every night? Physically, huh? Okay, I get that he's my sister's teacher. And who are you? Oh, this is Amelie. I'm Elise's little sister. You have a sister? Well, more like, things kind of ended up that way. I'm her sister. We live together. Only for a short while, though. Like master, like pupil, huh? Anyway, master, where have you been for five whole years, leaving your top pupil behind? Well, about that. I'll explain. I see. And you're now trying to thwart Toma's plan? Traveling across worlds twice, changing your appearance? From anyone but you, I'd never believe it. Yeah, but it sets you. I wasn't expecting any of it either. Hey, I know. Elise, come with us to the Beastman continent. Help me out on my trip, like you did five years ago. Certainly. Would once have been my response. But, I'm actually caught up in a serious situation as well. I'm sorry, it's all because of me. Ever since you vanished, I started taking on jobs, fighting monsters as a continuation of my training. One day, I accepted a village's request to slay a dragon. That village was called Zathro. It was a nice, quiet town. Please use this house while you're with us. She's an important guest, so please take care of her. Hello, I'm Emily. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Do you like it? Yeah, back at Evil Barrow, it's hard to find food this fresh right now. Right, you're at war with the humans. Oh, I have fruits too. You don't have to go to so much trouble. Do you live here all alone? No, this... Used to be my brother's house. Your brother? I'm not from this village. My brother found me about two years ago. He said, starting today, we're a family. So I lived here with him, but... He hasn't come home since the day the dragon first appeared. So I'm alone again. But it's fine. I've been alone all of my life, so I'm used to it. Emily, this is a nice village. The food is good, and the villagers are kind. I'm growing a bit tired of traveling, so once this issue is settled, I'd like to stay here for a while. Oh, please do. This house is too big for me to live in alone. So, during that time, you can treat me as a sister. Would you really be my big sister? Sure. I mean, if it's okay with you. Of course, big sis. Can I ask you something? Is Emily's brother missing because he was killed by the dragon? Actually, it seems like that's not the case. Every time there's a dragon attack, 
several villagers go missing. It wasn't just her brother. Missing? Yes, normally if a dragon attacks, it leaves some evidence of a battle behind. Even if the people are defeated, they should leave something behind. But everyone disappears without the slightest trace. No exceptions. Doesn't sound like a normal attack. Like they're being spirited away. Yeah. I thought the first order of business would be to defeat the dragon. So I took a drastic measure. What are you doing? I was disabling the ward against evil. What? Then the dragon can come right here. That's the plan. I'm going to lure it in and beat it here. But that would put you in danger. I'll be fine. It's going to get dangerous here soon. So head back home. Okay? Okay. What's wrong? Well, I wanted to show you this. How pretty. Isn't it? I'm good at catching these. Aw, and I caught that one for you too. I have to introduce you to Big Bro too. We see that she's fighting the dragon. She jumps off the roof and stabs it in the shoulder. It flies off. I cornered the dragon and went after it to finish it off, but... I lost track of it so I returned to the village only to find... that the rest of the villagers had gone missing as well. All except for her. At dawn, I decided to go to the city to have someone take care of her. And then you bumped into us and hitched a ride? Yes. If what you said is accurate, that's a big deal. An entire village gone missing? Yes, I want to find her brother and allow her to live peacefully in the village, but... I don't understand what's going on. Do you have any ideas, Master? Does a kidnapping dragon ring any bells? I've honestly never heard of anything like that. But I'm willing to help. We can't pretend we didn't hear anything. Really? Yeah, my precious pupil is in trouble after all. Thank you, Master Setsu. And, um... Mrs. Setsu. This incident can be explained by zombies. Zombies? The whole village became the walking dead. There's actually an evil necromancer among the villagers. I don't think there's anyone like that in my village. Besides, don't zombies increase in number, not disappear? Ah, the rare air zombie. Once they become zombies, they become invisible. Never heard of that before. So what about the dragon then? It was a dragon zombie, of course. There was a legend in a country somewhere out east about a zombie that became a dragon. Take this seriously. Wait, what about a siren then? Among sailors, when people go missing, it's a given that sirens are behind it. They said a siren's song draws men into the ocean. I thought the village was in the mountains. Who knows? Maybe there's a siren who lives in the mountains because they love the food there. That's just... Okay, maybe. Uh, sea monsters have a distinct smell that makes them easy to identify. So I don't think that's it. Oh, Leviathan? You don't smell, of course. Huh? Do I stink? I got it. The culprit is... Space aliens. Space aliens? Everyone knows about them in my world. They come from the moon aboard flying saucers and abduct humans. So they're the... Setsu, take this seriously. But, I mean, what if the dragon that attacked was an advanced species like Levia? It could avoid pursuit by taking human form and hiding among villagers. Levia, you could make villagers vanish without a trace, right? Stop making me sound bad just because you're stumped. I can't and I won't do that. Huh? Leviathan? Are you a dragon? No. But you do look kind of like one, don't you think? Stop comparing me, a god of the seas, to a mere dragon. God of the seas? Assuming such a dragon exists, why didn't it use that magic to make Elise disappear? Excuse me, it doesn't look like we'll be able to cross until the water settles down. Yikes. What are you going to do once you reach the city? I'll go back to the village of Zathro and try to find evidence of the lost villagers. And you were going to do that alone? Now I have master. Big sis. Why did the dragon keep attacking the village over and over anyway? Well, maybe it was just really hungry and saw the humans as prey. 
Or maybe it was drawn there by magic power. Magic power. The magic power people use can attract monsters. For example, if you tried to use powerful magic inside the village, some monsters could potentially be attracted to it. I see. One more thing. Why did the villagers disappear? Even if magic power was the cause of this, it doesn't explain that part. People don't just evaporate into thin air. They have to have gone somewhere. Magic powerful enough to attract a dragon. Doesn't transfer magic fit the description? You said people vanished after every attack. What if it was the opposite? What if the attacks happened after people vanished? Do you mean... There's only one explanation. They were taken somewhere using transfer magic. Every time that happened, the dragon got lured in by the magic power. But, master, all magic needs a user. Are you saying someone was hiding nearby? Why don't you ask the user themselves? Think about it. Transfer magic is no quick task. It takes years of preparation, right? But wasn't there a person who arrived two years ago? Wait, are you saying you suspect me? That's absurd. Space aliens were a more convincing alternative. She's the victim here. You can't treat her as the bad guy. At this point, sure. But I have one more question. When Levia was telling us the siren story, do you remember what you said? No. Sea monsters. Um, sea monsters have a distinct smell that makes them easy to identify. But most demons have a sense of smell like that. Levia is out of the ordinary. Even in her human form, she doesn't let her magic power leak out. Of course, I'm a sea god. Not even Elise could tell. So how did you know what Levia really was? Well, that's because... I know. A thing or two about monsters. What happened? We see that she's a dragon. She really was a dragon disguised as a human. They dodge the attacks. Setsu dodges. Levia gets behind it. I am Master Setsu's top pupil. I don't remember ever taking you on as a pupil. Do something, top pupil. Let's go, Elise. Right. She smacks away the fireballs. The dragon trips. Levia. Got it. She infuses his sword. He slashes and it goes into the dragon's mouth. But the dragon flies off. Elise. She jumps in the air. And stabs it in the head. Causing it to disappear. It's like snow. Setsu looks at Elise. She stands there. Are you sure it was okay to leave her on her own? Hmm? Oh, you mean Elise? Yeah. We defeated the dragon, so she can take it from there alone. Besides, if she's going to call herself my pupil, she should finish the jobs she takes on. Well, how master-like of you. They see the Beastman continent. Elise returns to her home. Emily. I should introduce you to them, big sis. To my brother, to the other villagers. And... Emily, how? Oh, did you think I was dead? You really have a dull sense of smell. These pets of mine and I have totally different smells. Where are the villagers? They turned into dolls. They all had strong magic power. Dolls. Don't give me that look. They need magic soldiers for the war. Emily, you're... There was never anyone named Emily. Who are you then? I am Meluar, the Monster Master. Tomasama gave me that name. Then the episode ends. Some personal thoughts. Who could have guessed the person that was causing the disappearances happened to be the very same person they just met? At least we have confirmation that Toma is behind all of this. So I wonder if they'll explain who Toma was before being summoned again. Is he just another student that wants to take over the world? Or what? I don't have too much to say about this week's episode. It wasn't a bad one. I'm looking forward to next week. But that's about it. So yeah.